Will the Great Tribulation be before the time of Jacob's trouble? Uh, let me explain this because some people are probably going, what in the world are you talking about? <laughs> okay, um, I'm not changing my my views of you know uh, the end times and things like that. Um, you know the Bible is pretty clear on that. But uh, what I'm saying in this with this question, well, this isn't going to be a real in-depth, detailed study and things. Um, I'm just kind of presenting this and I want to hear your opinions out there body of Christ if you're lost don't bother because you don't have spiritual discernment you need to get saved first before the Holy Spirit's going to reveal things to you but uh, and I'm not joking there that's very important um, but if you're saved I'd like your opinion on this uh, I have been wrestling with this thing and struggling with this thing now for a long time of um, the what is the atmosphere when the Antichrist shows up uh the bible's crystal clear that the, you know saints are in heaven in revelation chapter 5 before the antichrist is unleashed in revelation chapter 6 so you know it's crystal clear um I, again i have over 100 videos on the rapture issue and things people still come along and i say you don't know what you're talking about you know yeah i've just only been preaching on it for years and years and years and covered every argument counter argument and all this stuff whatever some people you just can't convince them they're blind but here's what I'm saying, okay, and this is the debate here. Um, are people, is it going to be so bad, and is the, is the devil setting up things to look like it's going to be the Great Tribulation, and then at the end of that, the Antichrist shows up and people say, oh, it's Jesus, and we're, we're through the Great Tribulation. And actually, in reality, there was quote-unquote great tribulation because it's just a description of what happens but the time of Jacob's trouble is a different thing all right uh, the time of Jacob's trouble starts with the you know I believe the, the Daniel 9 27 the thing of the Antichrist confirming the covenant and I do believe it is the Antichrist confirming the covenant in the context there and everything else um, and you know and, and it's getting very very real with this whole thing um, you know uh, this thing of Donald Trump I've been asked to comment on that what do you think brother Brian you know and stuff and it's just like wow it's really something big well it is but a lot of people are going back to this thing of it could be the peace treaty it could be the peace treaty brother and that's not in scripture where's this teaching out of this this peace treaty there's no peace treaty in Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 it says he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week you know there's no peace treaty there well, the Jews and the Muslims, you know, the Jews and the Palestinians, they're going to sign a peace treaty. Where's it at in Scripture? Where's it at in Scripture? And I've I've repeated the thing without really even looking at what the Scripture says. You look at the, what the Scripture says, and it's just like it's not there. You know, by peace, he's going to destroy many when he comes. All right? But what I'm saying is, I believe personally, what I've been feeling, and I've seen it, some of you have commented on this, and what I believe personally is going to happen I think that things are going to get real bad, a lot of war, a lot of natural disasters, all kinds of things like that, and somebody's going to get blamed, and they could actually hack, you know, have some guy, like there's people say Jared Kushner, you know, Trump's son-in-law and stuff like this, he's going to make a peace treaty. They could pull that thing off, that there's some kind of a little peace treaty, quote-unquote, just to throw people off, that America could get destroyed in this time period, and they could say, well, the Antichrist was Jared Kushner or Donald Trump or some kind of thing like this. And and uh, there was a peace treaty and stuff, and, and it went this amount of time and whatever. And then when the Antichrist actually shows up, people say, we made it through the tribulation. Jesus came back, you see. And you have Stephen Anderson and things, and they made this thing of America is Babylon, and a lot of people are latching on to that. And again, America falls in this these wars and things like that, and America is pretty much finished, I mean... America is just like this reeling kind of drunkard and stuff, just waiting for somebody to come along and pop them on the chin, and down we go. I mean, take out, you know, all it would have to be is China say, uh, we're pulling, you know, the plug on your debt thing, you know, pay us back the money that you owe us. That would destroy America. You could have some country launch a, a EMP, electromagnetic pulse type of a burst thing, and boom, fry the electrical system. The electrical grid is terrible in this country knock out all the electricity people would kill themselves you know 
I mean, there's so many ways to bring down this country. America is very, very weak. Uh, we still have a very strong military, um, but again, that's being used by the Vatican, and it's going to be used by the Vatican for their big crusade against Islam. I fully believe that. But again, you can see see what I'm saying here. Destroy America, and you know you could even make some kind of a peace treaty in this whole thing. And then America gets wiped out. People say Babylon has fallen. Revelation 18 has been fulfilled. This man comes back, the man of sin, but he comes back as a perfect counterfeit Jesus Christ. Which you know, again, I've talked about the, you know, the thing of you know, I believe that they could be actually. You know, all these Catholic artists could have been painting the Antichrist down through the centuries, this Jesus guy of the Catholic Church. Uh, there's no description at all like that in the, in the entire Bible. Um, actually, Isaiah chapter 53 says that he's not very attractive. There's no beauty in, beauty in him when you see him. He's not an attractive man. But you look at the Jesus of the Catholic thing, he's this handsome guy with the long curly hair and stuff. Um, it's not Jesus. But you could have this whole thing happen, and... Uh, where basically it's really bad, and then Antichrist shows up and people say the, the Great Tribulation is over, and now we go into the Millennial Kingdom. And reality is, things are just going to start getting worse. As bad as it is right now, again, there's people that are looking at the fires in California, they're saying, well, see, a third of the trees being burned up, and people are trying to say that we're in the Great Tribulation right now. And I think in that, in the midst of all that war stuff, I think the rapture could happen, and then things get really, really bad, and then the Antichrist could show up. I don't know. But let me show you two scriptures, which kind of lead me to think that it's going to be really bad, and people are going to say that this is the Great Tribulation, and when the Antichrist shows up, they're going to say, Second Coming. This is Jesus. He returned. Uh, Babylon, USA fell, and... We're here in the Millennial Kingdom now. And so, again, that's going to make it a really big thing because then the people are going to be like, well, he's Jesus. He's telling us to take this mark and worship his image. Let's do it. You know, because we already went through the Great Tribulation. You see what I'm trying to get at here? Let's look at the two different passages here. Matthew chapter 24. See if we can see this break here. All right. Matthew chapter 24. Um... Verse 5, And many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. You see? He's saying, these things must come to pass. See that ye be not troubled. There, it's, not, it's not just rumors of wars. It is actual wars. It's bad times. These things must come to pass, though, but the end is not yet. Notice that. Verse 7, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. We're seeing that right now. The beginning of sorrows. Verse 9, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Alright? Is there something there? Well, who's he speaking to? He's speaking to the Jews. Then shall they deliver you, the Jews, up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Well, is that really happening right now? No. Um, well, how's it going to happen? Well, you could say if the, you know, with this whole thing, there's already violence happening over this thing of this announcement that Trump made that the United States is now going to re recognize Jerusalem as the capital city of Israel. Uh, there's already violence as a result, so that could kind of be fulfilling some of that stuff there. But uh, what if there's a huge world war that tips off as a result of this whole thing, and there's the Muslims are getting wiped out like crazy? Again, you know, uh, it's been talked about the possibility of America, you know, nuking like Mecca and Medina or something like that, which would incite a war with Islam, and, you know, it probably would mean the downfall of America. It'd probably be just Muslims coming and killing and all kinds of stuff like that and fighting in all kinds of war. You would bring this country down and people could say, see, Mystery Babylon has fallen. Again, I don't know. Um, but you see, a, there's kind of that break there. 
all these are the beginnings of sorrows, then shall they deliver you up. So the wars, the rumors of wars, the earthquakes, the pestilence, the famine, all that stuff, it's like that's kind of the beforehand. Let me show you another one, and this is a this is the big one to me. First Thessalonians chapter five. You know, there's no doubt in my mind that this, you know, move that Trump made, there's no doubt that this is very significant biblically. But again, you got to remember this false teaching of this peace treaty between the Jews and the Islamic, you know, speci specifically the Palestinians. There's no scripture for that. I'd like some, I would like anybody to put one verse of scripture down there. Um, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, in all honesty. Show me the verse of scripture that says that there's a peace treaty between Jews and Muslims, be they Palestinians or the Jordanians or the any of the surrounding countries and things like that, Syrians, Egyptians, whatever. Show me the verse of scripture that says that there's a peace treaty between Jews and Islamic people. I don't believe it. Confirming the covenant, you know, the Jews are very, very rich, powerful, you know, free Masonic connected types of people. Well, there's some very powerful Jews out there, but they pale in comparison to one organization, and that's the Roman Catholic Church. You start looking at the knighthoods of Roman Catholicism and the, some of the old families in Italy and stuff like that, you're talking big power and big, big money. And again, you go to Revelation 17, you have the woman riding upon a scarlet collared beast. You know, she commits fornication with the kings of the earth. The Roman Catholic Church is in control of the different nations out there. And of course, the Antichrist, you read his description, there's only one man that fits that description, sitting on a throne calling himself God. It's the Pope. Um, it's there. The Roman Catholic Church isn't just going to be sitting on the the back scene of the whole thing and watching the Jews and the Muslims signing a peace treaty and kind of getting along and going, oh, you know, what, is, what does Christ's church have to do in this time? They're controlling the thing. But let's look here. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. Actually, we'll start in verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as a woman, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So again, you see that thing, that kind of that break there. They're saying peace and safety. And I don't believe it's, oh, we have peace and safety. No, they're saying we, we need peace and safety. Okay, why? Because there's that really bad stuff that's happening there. What Jesus said in the early part of the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Wars, rumors of wars, nation rising against nation, pestilence, earthquakes, famines, you know, all this different stuff. That's happening, and it's only going to get worse. And again, as I've said in another study, think of what will happen when the rapture actually occurs. And I've talked about this in great detail, but I believe that when the rapture happens, I think it's going to be like a very loud, bam, clap of thunder, and... That's what the lost people are going to hear. Again, say people, they hear God's voice. It sounds like a trumpet talking with them. The trump of God, the Bible talks about. Um, lost people, when they hear that same voice, the voice of God, they hear thunder. So, you know, the Lord in John chapter 10 talks about that he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Um, I believe the Lord's going to say your name, if you're saved, and my name. And he's going to say, come up hither. And up we'll go. We'll say, whoa, it sounds like a trumpet. Boom, up we go. Lost people hear this. Boom, big loud clap of thunder. And they blink, you know, as you do when you hear a very loud noise. You, you instant, instinctively blink. And the Christian that was standing there is going to be gone. Now, uh, there's, some, there's a theory there that, you know, your blood could be left behind. Your clothing, I believe, is going to be left behind as well. Again, it's just a theory. I'm not teaching that as doctrine, all right? It's a theory, what will be left behind when Christians leave. It could be clothes and blood. It could be that everything goes, or I don't know. But the point is, you have people that are there, and all of a sudden, boom, big explosion, and they leave. What are most people going to think? They're going to think it was some kind of a suicide bombing. Here comes this vehicle. What's, what's going on all the time in the news? You get these Muslims in there, and these crazies and stuff. Most of them are mind-controlled and things. And... They're driving their vehicle and they're slamming into people. 
What's going to happen if Christians are driving their vehicles and the rapture happens? Unmanned vehicle. Boom, hitting into things. See? It's already preparing people for this thing that's going to happen. Suicide bombings. Out of control vehicles. Who's going to get blamed? Islam. What's the, uh, you know, I mean, what's, what's been the battle since the first century? Jews versus Catholics, right? Catholicism initially, you know, created Islam, and you can look that whole thing up. Again, I can't get into all that, but um, Catholicism was there at the beginning of the creation of Islam, and specifically to go after Jews and Christians. So they started to train and started to finance a lot of the early Islamic movement and things like that, and things got kind of out of hand, and the, the Muslims didn't get along too good with the Catholic hierarchy, and they started the Crusades, and they're starting to fight against each other, but it's the Jews and the Catholics. They're the two big players, the Zionist Jews and the fascist Catholics. That's the two power structures there. And, you know, free Masonic Jews and, and the knighthoods of Catholicism, they're the ones that are fighting. Well, what's the one carrot that could be dan dangled from by the Catholics in front of the Jews' eyes? Well, what's the most powerful military in the world? The American military. Well, Catholics, the Knights of the Equestrian Order and stuff like that, you can see that a lot of the um, control of the military, you have the Knights of Malta, the Knights the Templar and stuff like that. A lot of these high-level military officials have Catholic knighthoods as well. And so these guys can be used by the Vatican to say to the Jews, hey, um, we'll dangle this little carrot in front of your eyes. How about uh, you confirm this covenant with us? And the Jews say, not interested, sorry, get away. And the Catholics say, what if we wipe out Islam? One of your, you know, your biggest enemy, basically, the biggest threat. What if we give you the city of Jerusalem in exchange for us having some rights to the uh, temple that's built there? That's already going on, brethren. It's already happening. Now, what if that occurs and the Catholics say, we're going to wipe out Islam. We're just right, waiting for the right event to happen. Rapture occurs. Boom, you see you know, a bunch of people leaving. And they say, well, they're radical fundamentalist Christians, just like they say radical fundamentalist Islamic, you know, jihadists or whatever. Radical fundamental Christians leave. And there's, you know, what looks like suicide bombings and unmanned cars slamming into things. And they go, this is the biggest attack ever by radical Islam. And if the children disappear, oh boy, <laughs> it would really be bad. See? And this could make this war type of a thing happen, and there'd be all this killing and everything else, and then the Antichrist shows up. See? Or he shows up and he confirms it. I mean, I don't, I don't know how the whole thing's going to work out. How does this whole thing play into it and stuff? What's happened right now? And I know another friend of the ministry sent me an article saying that the Jews are now saying, hey, if we get Jerusalem, if, you know, the embassy has moved from Tel Aviv to, to Jerusalem, the U.S. embassy, then maybe we can start to rebuild the temple. I mean, it's like, okay, wow, you know, things are shaping up very quickly. But I really have a feeling within me that there's this really, really bad time and then that break when the Antichrist shows up. You know, and again, there could be war, there could be fighting and, and stuff like this over that, over what's happened, and the rapture happens, and there could be a lot of killing, or, you know, the Antichrist could show up right around that time period, confirm the covenant between Catholics and the Jews, and says, we'll totally take out, you know, the rest of Islam that's left over, or whatever, or maybe they'll do that as a result of the rapture. The rapture happens, Antichrist shows up and says to the Jews, okay, now we have the justification. Let's go out and wipe out all the Muslims. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really sincerely, you know, wanting to get input from you, the body of Christ. Um, what do you think? Uh, yes, I do believe that this move is significant. Yes, I do believe it has some very deep prophetic implications. Um, but I'm not going to perpetuate a teaching which has no basis in scripture and that is the teaching of this could lead to the 
peace talks between the Jews and the Palestinians. There's no scripture for that. Again, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. If, if somebody out there can show me the scriptures that says in the end times that there would be this peace treaty between Jews and Muslims, show me. Show it to me. Um, I don't see it. I don't see any kind of scripture at all for a Islamic takeover of the world and the Islamic Antichrist and this other stuff. Uh, I think that stuff is nonsense. I think that it's, it's purposefully been planted in the body of Christ to distract people away from the real enemy, and that is Roman Catholicism. Uh, the Jews, they got some bad stuff coming. Okay, the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob is Israel. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7 talks about that. Um, they're going to get a bad whipping coming up, and it's because they basically signed and you know, confirmed a covenant with the devil. Um, and the devil being, you know, the Roman Catholic Church. So that that's my opinion on what's going on. And uh, I'd be, like I said, please post your comments and things and let me know. Let me know what you think. So very interesting times that we're living in, brethren, and uh, looking forward to the rapture. Very much so. Uh, if you're not saved, please get saved. Uh, get that thing worked out between you and the Lord. Okay, get your personal relationship. I didn't say join a church or, you know, whatever else. Personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.